Hi, uh, as Sarah said, I'm Yaeli, not Yaeli. <laughs> That's okay, I'm used to it. Um, so, before I introduce myself quickly, I just wanted to have an idea of how many of you are currently working with a design system. Can you raise your hand? Okay, not all of you. How many of you are working with more than one design system? More than two? I really, really want to talk to you and ask you lots of questions later, so try and grab me. Um, you may have answers for me. So I'm, um, I'm a senior designer at Microsoft Developer Services. I'm a Portuguese, Panamanian, and I live here in London. I, as uh, some of you know, I have a really, really unhealthy obsession with podcasts, and especially true crime ones. Um, I don't know what that means about me, and um, I'm a cat person, so sorry. I have been working on design systems for many years now, even before they were called design systems. They were called other things like style guides, frameworks. And right now I'm working on the design system for Azure DevOps. They are teams to plan and collaborate, uh, test and build and deploy their code. Previously, I worked at Canonical for many years. Canonical is the company behind the Ubuntu operating system. I worked on the vanilla framework team, uh, which is the design system behind the Canonical's different websites and different cloud products. And I have also worked agency side for a while with Sarah and a lot of people here in the room on a bunch of different client projects, also involving a lot of design systems work. So enough about me. Uh, before I continue, actually, I would just like to clarify a little bit what I mean when I say design system. So everyone is talking about design systems right now, um, but it can mean different things to different people. And I'm sure a lot of you agree with me on this, so I'm probably preaching to the converted. But for me, just having a style guide or a UI kit in a sketch file or a Figma file or something doesn't qualify as having a design system. So these, these things can and they should be parts of a design system and they are probably very likely the way that you start making your own design system, but just having that file doesn't mean that now you have a design system. It's like, it's the same thing as having a list of ingredients, but not having any recipe, not having anything to show uh, out of those ingredients. So it's a lot more than, than that. So for me, the uh, design system is uh, a lot of live, living things. It's a system of principles and guidelines and design components that can be used by designers and engineers and other people to be able to, to build consistent products and consistent experiences. So it's a number of pieces that are part of the same thing, are part of the whole. It's not just the ingredients, but it's also having the recipes and the methods, blueprints and uh, the utensils and the techniques. So it's everything that combined is going to help you define how you're going to design and develop the products or the various products that you are trying to create. I find it easier to think and talk about design systems exactly the same way as we talk about any product. It has everything that a product has, so if you think about it, a design system, it's going to have users, it should have roadmaps, uh, it's going to be released, it's going to have features, you're going to have to maintain it because sadly it's going to have bugs, and you're going to have to document it, and you're going to have to support the people that are using it and you probably have teams working on it, maybe you have product managers if you're lucky, you might have designers, developers, a lot of things. So everything just like uh, uh, any other product. And also just like any other product, you don't get it right the first time. Just as, as Gina said, you, a design system is always evolving, you're always making it better, you're always iterating and, and improving it. So more often than not, design systems teams 
if they exist at all, if you're lucky to have one, they tend to be really small. And many times the members of that team, the people in that team, are responsible not just for the design system, but for many other things. So the design system work is not um, their full-time job. So their time is really, really limited. So making sure that the other, pe other people from other teams, maybe from the community at large, uh, can help you evolve the system is really important for it to be able to flourish. And even if you do have a very large team to work on the system, you still want that participation because you're probably not designing a system just for yourself. You want it to be used, you, you want it to be useful for as many people as possible, and you want it to be a reflection of the best design and of the best engineering that is being done inside your teams and across your company. And you're, not gonna, you're never gonna be able to do that just on your own. So today, I'm going to give you five tips that hopefully will help you to try to encourage participation and contributions to your design system. So my first tip is lead by example. So there's going to be a moment when everything that you're trying to implement in your team is still new. So imagine that you have established a process of how you want people to submit requests for new components or how you want them to propose changes and ask questions. You shouldn't expect people to just immediately start following the steps that you defined very carefully, very nicely, uh, without any kind of encouragement and also without an example to follow. So let's say you have regular meetings, for example, um, regular re review meetings. You want to make sure that you agree with someone beforehand in those first few meetings so that they can bring something to review and you want to plan a little bit with them and do a little bit of preparation beforehand so that people can see how in the future those conversations are going to happen, how those meetings are going to work in the future. So there's going to be, a, there should be a degree of staging of and of choreographing those initial participations so that people can feel comfortable after a while doing it on their own. So you're just going to basically show them how you want things to work in the future so that they feel comfortable doing it. Also make sure that everyone in the core design systems team can answer questions about the new processes and you know everyone should be like really well versed in this kind of customer service. So they, be, sh they should be really ready to answer any question that comes their way. And also make sure that everyone in the team is very welcoming of, of those questions. They're not just, they're not gonna make people feel silly uh, when they ask questions or they're not gonna lose patience because they're being asked the same question over and over again. So the whole core team should enact the way that you want other people to participate so that people can, can model, can start modeling their participation on how you're acting yourselves within the team. And be prepared to answer lots and lots and lots of questions, many times, over and over. But also remember that it's important that you can be firm in your answers. So let's say you want to increase with the design system, you want to increase the, um, the quality of the output of, of the design system, of the design of the engineering for example, and you think that you need to have more design reviews and more code reviews to be able to, to achieve that. But someone, is really, someone wants to skip those steps. You need to be prepared to be firm and, and ask them, just give the, the new process a try and then we can iterate on the process uh, if things start to, to be slow. But you need to be able to be both welcoming, be, patience, but also, be patient, but also uh, be prepared to be firm so that you can try new things. Tip number two, make your processes super, super, super clear. So you and your team may know everything, how everything fits together. You know all the rules, all the guidelines, because you were the one that defined the process and you want everyone to follow that process when they're contributing to the design system. So you spent a lot of time thinking about how you want things to work hopefully for everyone else's benefit, not just for your own. 
But that doesn't mean that other people are going to just remember everything after you showed it to them once, after you presented everything, after you presented the plan and the steps. You need to set the expectations very clearly. You need to write things down, document everything, even things that may seem really obvious to you. For example, think about how, do you, how can people propose a new component? What are the steps to do that? What is considered a new component? And what goes into the design system and what doesn't go into the design system? Which guidelines does a component need to follow to be accepted? And like, do you have browser support guidelines that need to be followed, coding guidelines, accessibility guidelines? And are they easy to find? And also, what needs to be documented when you propose a new component or when a new component is created? And what format should that documentation be delivered in? So you need to think about all of these questions. These are all questions that people are going to ask about the process if they want to, to, to participate. Also, every time that someone asks you something, it's a really good chance for you to now go and write it down and make it clear for someone else that might have the same question. So you can start removing doubt from the process as much as possible. Because generally people, they do want to help and they want to participate, but they, more than that, they, they don't want to look silly and they don't want to make a mistake. And you don't want to have lots of super complicated rules, but the ones that you do, and they're hopefully there to maintain the quality of the system, they should be very clear and they should be very visible to anyone. Three, make sure that you listen to the quiet people. A big part of creating and maintaining a design system is having uh, conversations, critiques, dialogue. You're actively going to be seeking people out, so you shouldn't expect people to just come to you. You should be creating safe spaces to discuss design and engineering issues. You should have safe spaces so that designers are comfortable talking about engineering issues and engineers are comfortable asking questions about design and suggesting things. And everyone else can, so that everyone is comfortable talking about anything related to the system without anyone feeling foolish. But even if you are very welcoming in your discussions and in in-person meetings, there's always going to be someone, some people, that is going to find it hard to, to raise their voice and participate. So create ways for people that are not vocal to still be able to participate easily and for their ideas and their comments and their feedback to have the same kind of impact as the loud people. So, just to go through the screenshot, in, in Canonical, the design system uh, team had, and maybe still has, I uh, hope, uh, a working group meeting every other week. And the agenda was created through GitHub issues that anyone could submit beforehand. They just needed to add a label uh, with the, the, the meeting, and that meant that that topic was going to be uh, covered in, in the meeting. And all of the discussion and all of the decisions uh, that were talked about in the meeting were then documented in that same issue. Ideally, we wanted people to come to the meeting and participate as we were having the meeting. But by making it possible to participate in conversations asynchronously, it made it easier not just for people who were less comfortable speaking up, but also made it easier for people who were working remotely, maybe had a bad connection and couldn't hear very well, or people that were just on holiday that day or were sick. So usually by making things more accessible to a certain group of users, you are also making things easier for a bunch more people. So think about this when you're establishing new ways of working and new processes across, across your teams. Four, be ready to accept help. So you want to put processes in place to let people um, help you without any friction whatsoever from the start. You're probably going to be strapped for time. You're going to have a huge list of things to do and very few people, very little time to do everything. And that list is just going to keep on growing and growing and growing. If someone tells you that they want to help, that they can help, that they have some spare time, they're eager, 
you should never, ever, ever say, let me get back to you on that. You should always be ready and just ready to give them everything that they need to just help you straight away. They just walk back to their desk and start, start helping you straight away. So you want to think about things like, uh, let's say you have a, a, a GitHub repo. Uh, have you thought about what's a good first issue for someone that is just starting? And are your issues labeled, uh, the ones that you need help with, are they labeled with help needed? And have you thought about different levels of commitment for different issues that you might need help with? So for instance, if someone only has two hours, you still want them to be able to help you, but are there specific issues that they can help you with? And what about someone that has two days or a whole week? So those are very different levels of commitment and you don't want to give an issue to someone that only has two hours that you know is going to take them a whole day or more. Do you have getting started documentation? Do you have links to everything that people might need to get started? And also, do you have uh, a way, links for people to get help if they get stuck? How can people edit your documentation? Have you thought about that? Do you have, um, do you know how you want them to uh, submit a pull, do you want them to submit a pull request if they find a mistake in the, in the documentation? Or if they want to add something to the documentation, let's say they, they think something could be a little bit more detailed and more helpful, is there a way to do that? And do you have a way, writing style guide uh, of how you want people to write things? How about coding standards? Uh, also, what kind of testing do you want people to be doing in the components? Uh, how about a code of conduct? How, what kind of behavior isn't tolerated and where can people go if there's a problem? So you want to think about all of these things from the start. You don't want to wait until everything else is figured out and you've finished everything and you think everything is perfect to start accepting external help. The sooner that you start getting help, the better. And finally, share work in progress. Avoid presenting design system updates as a big reveal. The things that you're adding to the design system are going to have an impact on people's work and they may have to start doing things differently from what they're used to and no one really likes change very much. If users don't like what you've created for them and they're not invested in it and they're not willing to help you just by merely using those things, they're going to start rejecting it and they're not going to use it, and that's how design systems die. So have regular show and tells, have critiques about new components, make those sessions as open as possible. If people can't attend, share meeting notes and have places where they can comment afterwards. Also be transparent about the decisions that you're making, why maybe make it clear why some things are not going to be added to the system or why you're not prioritizing okay something to be done straight away and ask for feedback. Make it easy to give feedback and make it easy to ask questions, but also follow up on that feedback and show that giving you feedback has an impact and that you're not just asking for feedback, but they're not doing anything with it. A good design system is, is the product of a lot of smart people working together and thinking together with the goal of wanting to work smarter and making better products. So having a sharing mindset and being open to new ideas is really important. So I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own work. I'm myself in the process of implementing many of them, all of them, uh, in my teams. And it takes some time to get your processes right. You need to keep on iterating. Um, the processes just as you need to keep on iterating on the actual design components and your design language and your documentation and you're gonna make you're gonna make some mistakes but as long as you're willing to course correct and learn from those mistakes I think everything should be just fine I'm done <laughs>